Okay, next up we've got uh, Connor Riffle from the CDP. Uh, the floor is yours. Great, thanks. Well, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm Connor Riffle. Uh, I work at CDP. We're a charity based here in London. Uh, we've been around for about 10 years, and uh, my colleague Eva Way uh, also uh, works uh, at CDP. I'm just going to talk a little bit about our, about our organization, uh, the work we do with companies, uh, and then talk a little bit about our, the work that we do with cities, which is the work that I lead. And uh, then I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing around open data and how we've been trying <coughs> uh, in our, our very beginner, beginner and amateur way uh, to begin to, to utilize some of the benefits of, of making our data open and, and really using it to, to help uh, deliver the mission that we have uh, to help stop climate change. Um, <clears throat> so uh, as I mentioned, we were founded about 10 years ago. Uh, we've, we've really uh, done uh, some great work over the last decade in, in uh, encouraging companies to report on uh, their global uh, missions. So we now have uh, about 4,000 companies every year that report on their greenhouse gas emissions um, and other climate change related information through our, our charity. The way we work is that uh, we send a request every year on behalf of institutional investors. We have about 700 institutional investors uh, that back our request. And every year they request the data, they request climate change data from companies. The companies report it through our system and we make it available to the general public and to institutional investors. Um, the investors then take that data and they use it to make decisions about which companies they're going to invest in. Um, the original idea behind CDP uh, was that institutional investors and other investors should have transparency and knowledge about how climate change is going to affect the companies that they invest in. Uh, and that's why uh, the companies should have to report uh, on what they're doing. So we've, we've really hit scale. Uh, we, as I mentioned, 4,000 companies reporting. It's every major public company you can think of uh, except Apple. And um, they all report, we, we know what all their greenhouse gas emissions are, they report it all. Um, and if you're using that type of data, if you're, if you're looking, if you're interested in, in the carbon emissions from Coca-Cola or the carbon emissions from um, some other company, uh, you uh, in all likelihood are using uh, the data that, that, um, that CDP collects. Um, <clears throat> so we work all over the world. Uh, and in the, last, uh, in the last couple of years, we've really uh, begun to expand our work beyond just collecting data on greenhouse gas emissions and climate change from companies. Um, we've, uh, we've expanded to water, so we now ask companies to report, we have for the last three years, ask companies to report on what their, what their water use is. Uh, we've targeted uh, specific companies in water stress sectors um, or that operate in water stressed areas. And we ask them to report on, on their, their water use uh, as well and their water risks and opportunities um, and how uh, they're, they're, for instance, how they're managing water within their company. So that's been a very successful program as well. Um, and uh, increasingly, uh, you know, if you begin to think about, if any of you are interested in using data about uh, water in companies, uh, more likely than not you'll be using CDP data. Uh, and we've also recently, uh, this is the first year we're running a program on forests um, to ask companies uh, that, are, that, are, that work in the forest sector um, and that are exposed to risk from deforestation. Um, what, uh, what are their activities around deforestation? How are they preventing um, risk uh, from, uh, from uh, deforestation in their, in their, their operations and their supply chain? Um, we, in addition, one of the most successful programs we've done uh, has been uh, to work with uh, the supply chains of these companies. So we're not just working at a global level, um, but we're also working uh, through the supply chain of these companies. And the way that we do that is that instead of asking for data on behalf of institutional investors, we ask for data on behalf of the purchasing organization. So large companies like Tesco and Walmart um, ask their supply chain to go through the CDP process as well and fill out the CDP questionnaire. Um, and then that data comes back to us, we aggregate that up, and we're able to tell Tesco, oh, this is the, the climate risk that's embedded in your supply chain. Um, this is uh, the greenhouse gas emissions from all of your suppliers added up. And we'll be able to give them a sense of, of what their extended greenhouse gas uh, uh, emissions are. Uh, so, as I mentioned, uh, we've, we've, uh, we've really grown uh, rapidly. This is the, the total number of companies responding to CDP last year was, was over 4,000. Um, we also released a really interesting report uh, at, at the end of last year, which looked at uh, just our impact uh, across the, the entire financial, uh, all of the financial markets. And um, companies that are worth about half, uh, just over half of the entire world's market capitalization are now reporting every year through, through the CDP process. 
Um, so we've really, we've really hit scale in our work on, on climate change, um, and, uh, and that's, been, that's been really helpful. One of the, the programs that, uh, that is, is close to my heart and the one that I work on um, is to basically replicate what we've done for companies, but for city governments. One of the real benefits that companies have felt as a result of going through CDP is that the, the, when they get the CDP request, it's <coughs> often the first time that they have to actually, because they feel like they have to report to CDP, they feel like they actually have to start measuring their emissions. Um, and as a result of that, many companies feel the process of going through CDP and the process of measuring their emissions um, is really useful for them. They, they identify efficiencies, they save money, um, they really benefit from, from the process of, of looking at what are your emissions and therefore looking at what is your waste um, and beginning to quantify that and then reduce that. So what we wanted to do was to, to replicate that for cities um, because city governments are, are in some ways similar to corporations. Um, they're large entities with large budgets um, that, that are major emitters of climate change. Um, by some estimates, cities uh, emit about 70% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions, uh, consume about 70% of the world's energy. Um, so we are, we are very much uh, a creature of cities, um, and, uh, and the emissions that they have are, are quite significant. So we wanted to, to extend that program. Um, and so we have. We started in 2011, um, and we invited about uh, 50 or so cities to report, and we had a great response rate. Uh, 48 cities uh, total responded uh, to, uh, to CDP. Uh, we work uh, with the C40 organization, which many of you may have heard of. Uh, it's an organization of the 40 largest cities in the world. And um, these organizations are dedicated to reducing emissions uh, from, from climate change. Um, and they're one of our strategic partners um, and, uh, and have been uh, a great help for us. Uh, last year, we had uh, just over 70 cities uh, reporting. Um, and these are the major cities of the world, Tokyo, London, New York. Um, most of the cities, the big cities that you can think of, uh, are now reporting annually uh, through CDP. And we're just about to release uh, our results from 2013. They'll come out here in just a few weeks. Um, but we'll have well over 100 uh, cities uh, of the world reporting to, uh, to CDP. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is just a, a chart uh, which shows uh, what are the, the, the key metrics that we use to drive change and drive action in, in companies primarily um, is the scoring work that we do. So we make we score <coughs> all the companies that report through CDP. Um, they get both a disclosure score and a performance score. And we make that data uh, available um, uh, in our reports uh, through Bloomberg terminals um, and through Google Finance. So if those are, if those are sources um, th that you can access uh, the, the scoring data through. Um, but you can see that, that companies in general have, have a long way to go. 77 is out of 100. Uh, that's the average disclosure score. Um, and then the average performance score is, is about a C. Um, so uh, there are some companies you can see on the right that are performing very well, um, and, uh, and uh, there are a lot of companies that, that have uh, some, some work to do um, as well. But uh, on cities, I, I just wanted to say a, a few things uh, about <coughs> our, our work on cities. Um, we did, uh, on companies, primarily our, our business model is to sell the data that we collect. So we make it available publicly via our website, uh, if you want to look up any individual company's response, you can do that. Um, but our business model has been primarily to sell the data. Um, we sell it to, uh, to um, uh, we make it available to institutional investors. We also make it available to uh, ESG providers. So uh, there are a number of companies uh, like MSCI and Thomson Reuters that package up climate change data and sell that to institutional investors. So we make that data available to them. Um, but on cities, we wanted to do something a little bit different. And so what we did was, instead of following the usual CDP business model, um, we felt that this, this data from cities needed to be available to everybody. And um, so we did an open data implementation last year in which we made available uh, the data from the 73 cities that you, you saw that reported in 2012. And we just put it out there on our website. We did a very simple, basic open data implementation where if you gave us your email address, um, you could just download a, a CSV file of, of all of the data. And we did this really as a trial. Um, but it was very successful. Uh, in just a few months, we had about 500 downloads of, of the data set. Um, there was a lot of interest. Uh, about a third of the, the downloaders were uh, from businesses. About a third were from, uh, from uh, nonprofits. Uh, and about a third were from cities. And um, the, the, the open data implementation showed us that I think there's a lot of interest in what cities around the world are doing. Um, and that it's something that we need to, to do a better job of, of implementing and, uh, and making available um, our data. So that's the, the journey that we're on now, uh, is, to, is to take our data and make it available to as many people as we can publicly. 
Um, and there's a few things that our data, uh, I think, um, uh, shows. And I, I just wrote down um, a, a list of, of some of those things. Um, <clears throat> so one of them is, what are the most common reduction activities that cities are taking around the world? Um, they are, uh, there's, there's tremendous interest from cities and tremendous action from cities in what, what and how to reduce emissions. Cities are just interested in, in hey, uh, uh, you know, they're just taking a ton of action on, on reducing emissions. And, but one of the things we don't know is how are, what, what's the, what are the most common reduction activities? What's the, what are the most effective reduction activities? And because we're collecting this data and making it available, we're now able to see what are the most common reduction activities. Um, last year, one of our reports showed that, uh, that cities are investing most heavily in energy demand in buildings, in reducing energy from buildings, and in transport. Um, those are the two major categories that, that, uh, that cities are investing in most heavily. Um, but we're also interested in seeing what are the, the most uh, efficient reduction activities. Um, so now, as a result of the, the CDP process, cities are able to see um, okay, if I invest in um, changing all of my street lights from incandescent bulbs to LED lights, I'm, more, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get a bigger bang for my buck in terms of emissions reduction and in terms of money saved um, than I am from investing in transport, say. Um, so cities are able to make those decisions um, now based on the fact that we're collecting this data and, and making it available uh, to, to folks. So I think there's a, a kind of um, a data availability benefit uh, from uh, from from uh, making this data available and uh, helping cities to use it. Um, the second thing that I think is, is interesting is to allow cities to compare themselves to one another. So uh, one of the you may know, but cities are, are very competitive when it comes to figuring out uh, who's better, me or or, or uh, if I'm London, am I better than New York? Is is Tokyo better than me in in X Y Z area? And uh, the data that comes from CDP allows cities to be able to begin to look at that. Um, now the data is not strictly comparable, cities are, are very different beasts, um, but we're able to, to use that data to drive action uh, among cities. So to be able to say uh, to, to London or to New York, look, um, the other city is doing a better job in you than in XYZ area, therefore you should up your game uh, in that area. So uh, the data is able to, to really drive um, action by, by through, through, through competition and uh, through, through encouraging cities to be competitive with one another. Um, and then uh, the, the last thing is, I think, just general research. Um, I mentioned that uh, the, um, the cities are responsible for about 70% of, of global greenhouse gas emissions. That's a figure that's heavily debated. Um, and because of the data that we're collecting, we're able to now say, we're able to get a sense um, of which cities are the biggest emitters and what is the total contribution of all cities in the world to, uh, to greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so I think that's a, another really interesting area uh, that, our, that our work is, is helping to accomplish. Um, so uh, what's next uh, for us? Well, I think um, we have more work to do on open data. Uh, we're just beginning uh, to, to tap the, the benefits of, of the community uh, and to tap the benefits of, uh, of, of making our data available on the web. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm hopeful for, for the future, but we need help. If you, if you all have suggestions, um, please take a look at the data set that we have, um, download it, uh, let us know what you think. Um, I think we're, we're always interested in, in, in what folks think and how we can do a better job in, in making the data available. Um, so I'll stop there and, and happy to take any, any questions. Okay, let's take them in uh, groups of three, just like, like we had from before, actually. But first of all, a uh, round of applause, I think. Yeah. Okay. I would say that the biggest uh, the biggest difference uh, in is is it comes down to countries. It's not sector. It's really countries, and it's it's position of location. So, for instance, we have a very difficult time encouraging disclosure from companies in China and India. Um, there just isn't the same the same culture of disclosure there. Um, the national government is is heavily resists efforts uh, to disclosure to, uh, of for disclosure in part due to the political process that we were hearing about earlier. Um, uh, you know, China and India are very sensitive that, that any data that companies in their their midst or cities, for that matter, may disclose will somehow be used against them in international political processes. Um, and 
Uh, so I think those are the, 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 the you know, inter if you look at the globe, it's not sector, it's not individual company, it's really just, it's really just where the company is based um, and where their main operations are. Um, we have a very low response rate when requesting data from institutional investors in China, for instance. Um, but where we do have success is where is if the, uh, the requesting entity is uh, a purchaser. So I mentioned Walmart and Tesco are using CDP to request data from their supply chains. And, um, and if, if a supplier in China receives 10 requests from 10 of its clients, um, we have a 100% response rate. That, that, that company is virtually guaranteed to respond. Um, so we found success, you know, working through the supply chain in, in China, um, and you know we have a few other success stories uh, in some areas as well. Um, but but really, primarily, it's, it comes down to, to where companies are based. Okay, and then Tristan. Uh, I was just wondering if you are also involved in um, assessing the quality of the data that is that is reported to you, and and if not, I mean, how how, how do you get your confidence? In uh, like uh, verification of auditing the data. That is yeah. Reported. So a, a couple of things. I mean, one, uh, the the scoring that process that we do is quite rigorous, um, and uh, and that has a, is a big driver of, of whether or not uh, of of, um, of data quality. So for instance, uh, we ask companies to report whether their emissions data is verified by a third party, and um, we that, number one, just asking that question alone is enough to drive behavior because companies have to report publicly. And they say, well, I don't want to report, you know, I don't want to say that my emissions aren't verified publicly, therefore, I'll get my emissions verified publicly. Um, but then we do another really interesting thing with the scoring, which is that whether or not their emissions are verified publicly is part of the scoring process. So they're now judged and they're scored better or worse depending on how they answer that question. Um, so that really helps to drive uh, behavior on emissions verification. Um, but I would say, you know, primarily, and I don't know even if you have any thoughts on this, but I would say primarily, you know, the score is a big driver. Um, uh, companies do a better job uh, reporting to CDP because they know they'll be scored on the on the on the data, and they know that their score will be made public, um, and uh, and that's a big driver. And we're just starting to do the same thing with with cities. Um, cities are very sensitive to scoring um, as a result of the fact that you know it's very difficult just in broad terms to compare New York and London and Tokyo. They're just very different cities. Um, but but uh, and so we've been trying to drive data quality for the last three years in other ways. Um, but we've realized that, that scoring is the best way to do it, and it's been successful on, on with companies, so we need to replicate it um, with cities. Um, so over the next few years, you'll begin to see more and more scores from CDP on, on how cities are doing come out. Um, and that will help to, to improve comparability. It will help to compare some of the, the competition element I was talking about. Um, and I think it will help more people to use our data because it will be a little bit better to understand, easier to understand. Okay, thank you. Gonna just before, just while Paul asks ask his question, James is just going to be helping set up Julia for the final. <coughs> uh, Paul, fine, for, yeah, far away, man. Yeah. Um, so, uh, can anybody uh, give us a sense of the difference between the difference we allow any company that's interested in reporting the CDP to voluntarily fill out a questionnaire and, and be part of the process. Um, and the same thing for cities. Uh, we, we send out our invitation uh, this year, just to give you a sense of it, to about 250 cities. Um, and, uh, we, and this is the largest cities in the world by population, so all the major mega cities. Um, and the first city to report this year was called the village of Kadiovasik, and it's a tiny village in Turkey. Uh, they had their population is 214. Uh, people. And they told us, um, yeah, our population is 214. It's it's you know it's 107 men and 107 women. Um, <laughs> a lot of detail. Uh, but uh, but I, I you know I, I think that this is one of the most interesting areas because you have you have people sort of electing to go through the process of disclosure um, as part of as part of best practice. Um, and you have, uh, you, have, you, know, you have tons of companies that report voluntarily, um, and uh, now you know we have we have the village of Cayo Well, I was thinking about with, uh, with sort of you know suburban towns in areas yeah. where they could where they get this competition thing going between yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's yeah. it's very true. I mean, we're starting to run into that a little bit because um, we're now getting to the point where we have we're, we're starting to get critical mass on cities. So we've we've got kind of the largest cities in the world, but now we're starting to get kind of the not just the capital city, but now the kind of the, the local, the second city, you know? So then you start to get a little bit of competition. We're running into this with uh, San Francisco and San Jose, yeah. uh, which are basically in the same metropolitan area, more or less. Um, and now they're both reporting, and they're, you know, they're both kind of vying for who's going to be the leader in the Bay Area. Yeah. So 
Um, it's very, very interesting, and, uh, and I think uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, hopefully we'll see more and more of that going forward. Brilliant. Thank you very much, okay. Connor. Brilliant.